In this podcast, we will be talking about art during the Great Depression era. We will cover three different types, the Art Deco movement, the Harlem Renaissance, and photography. Throughout each of these genres, you will see a common theme, one of social realism. The Art Deco movement began in France just before World War I, but it only reached the Americas after in the 1920s. Art Deco is characterized by use of geometric shapes as the base of a design. It is seen both in architecture and in visual art. Another key aspect of the style is that usually the medium in which the art was made was made of a very expensive or rare material. So the Art Deco style eventually became a symbol of wealth as the materials were so pricey. It is often said that form was considered over functionality. This is why many examples of the Art Deco style of architecture no longer exist, because the original style was rendered impractical and potentially unsafe. Due to both the high price of the architecture and the furniture that was created in the Art Deco movement, there was a push from a group of modernists who called themselves the French Union of Modern Artists, who wanted to make furniture more affordable and functional so that architecture and furnishings could be mass-produced. After the push for mass production of furniture, Art Deco was slowly phased out. As I said earlier, the Harlem Renaissance and photography both portrayed themes of social realism during the Great Depression era. Social realism is considered art that is related to social protest in a naturalistic manner. The movement began in the Ashcan school painters, who painted the dirtiness and unglamorous realities of big city life. As the effects of the Great Depression became more and more significant, the American government, in particular, began to put more money towards supporting artists decorating public spaces with murals depicting subject matter relevant to American people. Many artists at this time were heavily influenced by Mexican propagandists. Many paintings began to openly deal with as said by the Encyclopedia Britannica, joblessness and poverty, political corruption and injustice, labor management conflict, and the excesses of American materialism. An excellent example of open social criticism is William Groper's The Senate, painted in 1935. This image depicts the American Senate and can be interpreted in a number of ways. I chose to interpret it as a comment on politicians' greed for power, and how, although they seem outwardly to be for the American people, like the man standing in the front, really, at times, they're just sitting, putting their feet up, reading the paper, as the two men in the back show. As an article on History.com said, the Harlem Renaissance was a literary, artistic, and intellectual movement that kindled a new black cultural identity. While the Harlem Renaissance was primarily visual arts, it is sometimes argued over whether it includes or excludes jazz. I've chosen to exclude it, although it did emerge at the same time as this black cultural movement. Harlem was a suburb originally created for white people of middle to high class. However, the Great Migration brought European and eventually black immigrants, so the area was duly abandoned by whites. The essence of the Harlem Renaissance was summed up by critic and teacher Alan Locke in 1922, when he declared that through art, Negro life is seizing its first chances for group expression and self-determination. While, for the most part, the Harlem Renaissance is argued as a good, positive point for the black equality movement, many black conservatives worried that the ghettoization of black culture would impede their goal of social equality in the long run. The movement was gratefully influenced by the themes of slavery, institutionalized racism, the difficulties of writing and creating in a world dominated by whites as a person of color, and life in a black suburb. While the movement waned in popularity later into the 1930s, its themes recurred later into the years as young black writers brought it back. I have chosen a painting that I believe to show the spirit the essence of the Harlem Renaissance. This piece is by Archibald Motley, called Black Belt. It is an oil on canvas painting currently housed at the Museum of Art at Duke University. It is an oil on canvas painting that shows life in a black suburb in 1934. The two men seen in these photos are Alan Locke and Langston Hughes, two of the largest curators 
of the Harlem Renaissance movement. Finally, we have photography. The 1930s brought photography to become a recognized form of visual art, as in 1936 and 1937, color was first introduced to film and photography. Much photography was very heavily influenced by social realism, as it depicted the struggles of everyday life, especially in times like the Great Depression. As Boundless.com said, it often portrayed working class activities as heroic. At first, social realism seemed to be primarily a painted movement. However, photography provided a very realistic portrayal of the poverty and loss experienced by many at the time. The FSA, Farm Security Administration, was responsible for providing press information to the public, so they hired and funded many photographers to document poverty and hardship in rural areas during the Great Depression. As Roy Stryker said, who was in charge of the FSA at the time, Introducing America to Americans was his objective. There were multiple famous Depression-era photographers, such as Walker Evans, Dorothea Lange, and Gordon Parks. Here, I have selected a photo by Dorothea Lange, one that I believe accurately depicts the struggles of the Great Depression. It is called Migrant Mother. With the new developments in photography and it becoming an art form of its own, a group called F64 emerged, who took precisely focused and exposed pictures called straight photography. The subjects of their photos were mostly natural forms, such as trees, capturing their true aesthetics. The Art Deco movement, the Harlem Renaissance, photography, and social realism allow us in the 21st century to be able to have a very good look back at the struggles and hardships of this time.